What's going on guys? So I thought I'd share a uh, quick kind of cool thing here. So this little uh, munition or mission, I, I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that. But um, this little camera here is kind of the first like webcam with an app integrated easy to use time lapse video. Um, now I wish like a US company would make one of these and would make it really really easy. Um, because if they did, I probably wouldn't be doing this video other than to talk about how cool it is. But I feel like this was so difficult to set up that I wanted to do kind of an instructional video for y'all. So, um, where this is cool, you're also going to learn how to set it up and use it. Um, so it does come with, I did get a successful time lapse out of it. So I know it works and I know it's got some poor reviews. Oh, look, it's not even plugged in that well. Uh, whatever. Um, you know, it's got like three stars or something. I saw that after I bought it. But, um, you know, I think it can be useful if it's used properly. So, you have a power wire, and then you have a wire that goes into your 3D printer. That's that little USB thing. Pretty easy setup. You literally just plug it into power, plug it into there. And then on the app, you will pull up a QR code and hold it in front of the screen here. So you'll hold your camera there, and then it'll link to Wi-Fi, and you're good to go. You need the 2.4G Wi-Fi. Um, so you can check that and make sure that you're on 2.4G on your on your little Wi-Fi here. You know, so we have a 5G. The 5G is faster, but most, um, you know, little unique P Internet of Things things. <laughs> I think that's what it's the right term. Sorry for shaking the camera a bunch. I'm sitting down. Um, they seem to like the 2.4G. So uh, because I am not a great YouTube editor or anything like that, um, I'm not sharing my phone screen, but I'm going to show you a Beagle print. Um, so first, you'll just do your regular thing of setting up your 3D print in Cura, and you are going to, um, you know, do whatever settings. You don't have to do anything different in Cura, and you're going to save this. Now, the one caveat that I'm realizing with this is it doesn't look like I can... You don't start a print from the printer. You start a print from Beagle print. Um, so that's the first thing that you'll have to do and one of the more confusing things because I ran it first and I was like why didn't it do anything um, but then I realized there was a spot to upload um, files into it to then have it print so this takes over the G code and finds each layer and then adds a pause at each layer so that's actually useful it'll take one of these G codes rewrite the G code so that it has those pauses in there and it takes a snapshot at those pauses. Let's see if my time lapse is done and I'll show you. Um, it was uploading into this folder here when I started this video. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so let me show you what it does and why it's cool. Uh, let's see if that'll work. Okay, cool. So, not too bad. The video quality could be a little bit better. I think it's just picking up on the 50 hertz. It's kind of cool like seeing this like that's kind of neat <laughs> it looks like that is moving as it goes up I wonder why it's doing that kind of tripping me out but not too bad so obviously I place oh look at the wheels too it looks like the wheels are rotating it's so interesting why it's doing that I almost wish I could have an explanation because it's a whole layer like it's doing an entire layer and then coming back but it looks like the dust is just lightly rotating like it I mean it you would almost say that's continuous right like it looks like the same dust is just moving I guess I don't understand that same with this down here yeah like that's the same exact dirt so it's not returning to its same exact position every time it's returning one little bit off or something or it's slipping I don't know that's just kind of an interesting tidbit here but these are the type of quality videos you can get it's kind of neat you can see that you know this ran overnight where people were coming in and out light was going on and off so that's kind of cool um, we kept a light on this but yeah I faced it the wrong direction so you want to make sure you face it the right direction another lesson um, so in order to upload it through your phone if you have Cura here and you're saving it and then you need to get it on your phone without having to take like a memory card in and out of your phone or something like that you can use a Google Drive so I have a Google Drive. There's also Dropbox or anything. You can log into some of these, but Google Drive is generally the easiest. A lot of people have Google Drive, so that's just what I'm going to show you on. So when I go to my Google Drive, I click on it, 
I have some things just kind of thrown in here. I should probably clean that up one day. Um, and then I have like my clients folder here. So this is for, you know, all my work and everybody's name in here. Um, and what I found is as I'm navigating through my phone through, through, uh, like for instance, when I pull up clients, there's so many folders in here. It takes a long time for my phone to load that. Um, and it's kind of clunky to search through. So I found putting a folder in the root in the, in the initial, my drive was the easier way to do it. So I just made a G codes for this. And then here I can put a G code in here and then here I can save my video. Now, when the app made this video, I had to download it first, then save it. So I guess it processed it, all the photos into a video and then it saved that video to my phone. And then I took that and I uploaded it into Google drive. Um, so that was a pretty easy process. It's just real quick. I go into Drive, I click Add, Add uh, File, and then I found this in my phone. It saved it under Movies. Um, so if you're looking for it and it's not in like camera or something, it might be under Movies. Um, but yeah, so you'll save that in there, and then you'll upload this through your phone, and then once it's uploaded, you can click Print, and it'll start printing. So it's not too bad overall once you get it set up. The key things are is just make sure it's connected to Wi-Fi, make sure it's working, make sure you can see it. And I'll show you through this app real quick. This app crashes when I go to use it. So I'm going to see if it'll, like, I'm pretty sure when I click on this, it's going to crash. Okay, so we have just a little update thing, a little about thing, log out. It doesn't like you on multiple things either. So, like, I, I realized when I was on this one on my phone... If I tried to use a different phone or if I tried to use a computer, it's like, hey, you need to log out. So I had to log out on my phone just to log in here on this computer. Let's see if it'll work if I click on it. Yeah, see, it's wigging out. I don't know if you can't tell, but the one and three there is, is wigging out. Yeah, see, it crashes it for some reason trying to access this through my computer. There's just something about it it doesn't like. It doesn't seem to crash the printer. It just crashes... Blue stacks. Now, I haven't tried any other emulator, but essentially, when you click on this, it just gives you options, and it's pretty neat too. It'll show you time lapses, and if your fan's on, you can turn your fan off, you can manually control the printer, you can upload files to it, the files will stay on the on the drive there. It, it, there's a memory card in the uh, in the actual camera itself. You can take those on or out. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Um, I was hoping that might work, but, but obviously it did not. So you can try other ones. There's other emulators other than BlueStacks if you wanted to try to run it through your computer. But as of right now, it seems like it's only going to work with your phone, either Apple or Android, it seems. Um, but you can try different ones. Maybe there's different settings I need to do. Maybe it's not accessing something that it, that it wants to. But um, I don't have a working solution on my computer yet. That would streamline it just a little bit faster because then I could just save directly to my computer and upload it. But as well as on my phone, like I'm not doing TikTok on my computer. I'm not doing TikTok too active right now anyways. But with these, I'm hoping to post more up on TikTok. So I can just post one of those videos with a cool little chill uh, music thing in the background. And people can kind of watch these and enjoy them. And I'll figure out um, cooler and cooler things to start kind of doing rather than just kind of a typical dragon. I wanted something, you know, semi-interesting but not too interesting. And it, it ticked me off. The very first one actually broke into pieces I did lightning infill and this is the only downside of lightning infill is it's not tremendously strong and I guess with this filament in particular it was pretty brittle so it came apart in a couple pieces here it's an otherwise beautiful print but it is glueable so we can put it back together but I was just like you know what like as a challenge type of thing I'm gonna print it better with better results and it'll come out cooler and it's gonna face the camera so it won't look stupid um, the lighting there is just kind of incon is, you know, is neat, but this one is actually what's providing a lot of light right in front, which will make it look good. Um, but yeah, no, I, I I like the setup overall. I think it'll look pretty cool. Um, I just want to kind of show you how to use it if you were confused, um, because you can probably be getting some neat time lapses out if you wanted to. Now I'll show you real quick how much is it if you've watched this whole video and you're like, all right, and you haven't already looked it up. Uh, let's see, Beagle Print, Beagle, if I can spell it right, Beagle Print, oh, might help if I type in camera, 
Okay, so this thing's like $80 with a $10 coupon. I think I paid $80 without that coupon. Um, maybe I did. I don't know. But for 70 bucks, not terrible. I think it's a lot. You know, it's a lot if you got 20 printers and you want to... You know, you know if, if you had 10 printers and you bought 10 of these right here, you're dropping $700. You know, so it can be a lot of money. We can see it doesn't even have a 5-star rating. I'm kind of curious. It works. It doesn't always work. Camera doesn't always connect. Once it's connected, you have to pray that it stays connected. From what I can see, the best practice is reboot the camera after every print. I learned this the hard way after it stopped a couple hours. Uh, connection issues. I mean, maybe the connection issues got fixed. This was October. Yeah, so, I mean, these are recent. So, buyer beware. I mean, I'm not saying buy this thing. Um, there was a reset tool provided. Uh, but never actually get the device to the app. I'll go the Octoprint. See, Octoprint is the other route you can go. But, like, with Octoprint, you need a Raspberry Pi. And then you have to load firmware on the Raspberry Pi. Then you have to load extra things onto the Raspberry Pi. And then you have to get a camera separate. And then you have to mount the camera uniquely. And then you have to, once you do all that, set it up so that it'll actually do the time lapse. Um, so there's a lot more setup than this. And I'm always for the easiest thing. That's why I went for the King Rune. It's six bolts and it's together in five minutes. You, you know, sure, there's a better printer out there that you'll put together in 30 minutes, but like, or an hour, but this one goes together in five. You give me 10 of these things in two hours, they'll all be running. Um, you know, or less than that. Like, that's, that's what I like about it. So I'm trying to find those easy solutions that someone can get in, turn a key, and drive a car and, and enjoy it. You know, the same thing here, where you can, where you can just download the thing with a couple steps, be producing something cool. Um, so that's why I came to this. It might work. I think it's just a little bit of either user error or it might not work with every phone. Um, but the nice thing with Amazon is, is this is probably shipped and sold by Amazon, right? Uh, most of the time it says that somewhere. Yeah, right here. Ships from Amazon, sold by InnoMaker. If it ships from Amazon, Amazon honors their return policy. So for like 30 to 90 days, I believe it is, you can return anything. If you don't like this thing, if it doesn't work, return it. Uh, give it an honest rating for all I care. I don't really care one way or the other. That's kind of an inter interesting way of doing it. What is that? I guess that's just a 3D print on a 3D print that they mounted right there. It's kind of a weird looking angle. Like, what type of angle does that give? I guess this angle? Is up above it like that? That's not too bad. I don't know. I'll be playing with the angles to see what I like better. It seems like they kind of like an above angle. Maybe the above angle looks cool. I thought the sideways angle looked good, but I guess the above angle is nice. I guess especially when the print looks at you. Um, so they kind of touched the camera a little bit. Oh, and then they reversed it. That's kind of neat. I like that. Um, yeah. Anyways, long enough video, guys. Have a good day. Like, share, subscribe. If you thought this was interesting, let me know. If you're going to get one, let me know. You know, I'm, I'm curious what your thoughts are. If you know of any better product, let me know. Um, but this seemed to be the quickest, easiest thing. Because in my opinion, this is a 10 or $20 camera and an app that should be like 5 bucks. But what I like about it is this isn't an app that's going to charge me 5 or $10 a month to use. Um, so I, I know I keep saying I'm going to get off, but that's one of the big things that I like about this and why I went ahead and spent the money is because it's not a monthly subscription. And if I get to own my hardware, I'll gladly overpay to own my hardware and not be charged on the back end for months on end because this would, this would wind up being something that, that I'd find cool and then I may or may not use it and then, or I want 10 of them and if I need 10 of them and that's, you know, 10 extra dollars a month, then I'm paying $70 a month for time lapses. You know, I don't want to do that, you know, and, and I know you don't either. So I try to find things that, you know, are, are best bang for the buck. Even if it costs a little bit more, it's worth it to own it than it is to pay a fee and i've found plenty of other apps that want to pay you a fee and then you're stuck for two years paying five to fifteen dollars a month and you forget about it and it's like oh crap i've given them 250 dollars and i didn't even use the thing for ten dollars worth um anyways have a good day guys um that's that's it yep later